Setting up Direct can be a long and involved process, but once it's all done, it's well worth the trouble. Today, I'm going to show you how to run a Direct calibration on your Concert XR series and Maestro X series processors, and help you avoid some common headaches the program might cause. I'll be running Direct on the Concert XR8, but the process is identical for all of our home theater processors and receivers. Our first stop is on the back of the unit. Make sure all the speakers in your system are connected and amplified. For this demonstration, I'm going to run a 5.1 system using 5 amplified channels on my XR8 and the sub 1 preout to a powered subwoofer. We'll make sure there's a good connection to the network via an Ethernet cable, and we can confirm the receiver is connected by going to the network settings on the front panel to find the unit's IP address. Next, go into the speaker types menu and make sure every speaker connected is listed here. For my system, front, left, center, right, and surround left, right are all listed as small 80 hertz, and the subwoofer is listed as present. Please note, it is very important that anything not connected to the unit is listed as none. Otherwise, Direct will try listening for speakers that do not exist, causing an error during the measurement process. If you plan to add more speakers to the system in the future, you will need to run a new Direct calibration when those speakers are connected. When the speaker types menu is set up, we'll go back to the menu, go to general setup, and make sure control is set for IP. Even if you don't plan to use IP control in your system, we need to turn IP on so Direct can communicate with the unit. Give the unit a quick power cycle if you do need to change the control method. These are the only adjustments you need to make before opening Direct. Do not set speaker levels and do not set speaker distances. Direct will adjust these automatically during its calibration. Let's make sure we have the latest version of Direct. Navigate to the product page for your X series and scroll down to the download section. While you're here, download the mic calibration file and extract it from its zip file. We'll need this later. Then click the Direct Live link we have listed. On the Direct page, scroll down until you see the download links for Mac and PC then download and install the program. If prompted, make sure to give direct access to the microphone on your computer. If you're on a Mac, you might need to go into your system preferences, and go to the privacy tab, and make sure that direct is checked to use the microphone. Let's open up direct. If it's your first time loading direct, you'll need to create an account and log in on the software. Once you've logged in, your unit will pop up on the devices page. We have a handful of X-Series in our system, and this one is the one I'll be measuring with today. If your system has multiple X-Series that you need to differentiate, you can find the unit's friendly name in the network settings and match that to the name listed in Dirac. Once you've selected a unit, you'll see the front panel display Dirac measurement. Once Dirac is communicating with your unit, we'll see select a recording device. Click on the calibration mic, then right click where it says no microphone calibration. Select load from file and then open the audio control AVR miccal2.txt from the mic calibration folder we downloaded earlier. With the mic selected and the calibration file loaded, we'll move on to the volume calibration phase. This is arguably the most important part of setting up Dirac. If things are set up correctly on this page, it will greatly reduce the chances of running into an issue during the calibration. The master output slider controls how loud Direct's tone sweeps will output. Start by sliding the master output down to about minus 80 dB. We'll likely need to increase this later, but minus 80 is a safe place to start. The mic gain slider controls the mic gain and should be set to 100%. We only bring this down if we experience clipping issues during the measurement phase. If the mic gain is set too low, then Direct won't be able to hear the tone sweeps properly, and you could get a signal to noise ratio too low error message. If the mic gain is set too high, you run the risk of bringing the noise floor up too much, potentially getting the same error. Each of these individual channel sliders will be used to fine tune the outputs so everything measures roughly the same. Press play on the first channel and bring up the master output slider until the channel measures something close to minus 12 dB and stop the test tone.
Move on to the next channel and repeat the process. If a speaker isn't getting quite loud enough, continue to bring the master slider up a little bit more. Don't touch the individual channel sliders just yet. Once all of the zones have been recorded, you can take the channel level sliders and bring them down to get all the measurements as close to minus 12 dB as possible. You can see here that my sub is recording a little bit lower, and so are the left surrounds, but that's going to be okay. As long as everything is within plus or minus 2 dB of minus 12, we should be fine, and it's typical for the subwoofer to just be a little bit lower than everything else. If the subwoofer is too low, you may need to boost the gain on your subamp or powered subwoofer. Next, we select the listening arrangement. This gives Dirac some indication of the size of the room and the typical listening position. The tightly focused image is ideal for small rooms where users are going to be listening from the same position. For example, if you're doing the measurement in a bedroom where users will almost always be watching TV from bed, this is the perfect image. Focused imaging is best for a medium-sized room. This image works great in most living rooms or a home theater with one row of seating. The wide image is what we see used most often. Used in large rooms where users might be watching from multiple seats or in an adjoining room, or if the calibration is in a home theater with multiple rows of seating. On the measurement page, we'll find our silhouetted listeners surrounded by measurement orbs. These different orbs will give you an idea where you should put the microphone relative to the main listening position. Depending on which arrangement that you choose, you might see more or less measurement positions around the main listener. The first measurement is in the center of the listening position at ear level. Dirac will reference this position for all other listening positions. Set your microphone in the first position, make sure you're not standing in line between any speaker and the microphone, and click Measure Selected Position. Dirac will go from speaker to speaker playing tone sweeps, and you'll see the measurements being recorded live on screen. Once a measurement is successfully completed, it will show you the measurements on the right side of the screen. Back on the left, you'll see Dirac is ready to measure the front top right listening position. Move the microphone to the next measurement position and repeat the process until you've completed all your measurements. Dirac automatically selects the next position, but you are allowed to choose a different position if you so choose. You have the power. You are able to proceed with only one measurement, but this is not recommended. The curve will not sound good with only one position recorded. The more measurements you take, the better the calibration will be. Dirac recommends at least five different positions before proceeding. As a brief side note, the most common Dirac call we get is that the low signal to noise message pops up after a measurement. I mentioned this before, but it's important to make sure that every speaker listed in the volume calibration page is being amplified and you can hear it during the volume calibration and measurement phases. If Dirac can't hear a speaker because it's turned off or disconnected, Dirac will think there's too much noise in the room and throw an error. Sometimes it will throw this error simply because the mic calibration file was not loaded. Go back and double check. The other common cause of low signal to noise is that the volume calibration wasn't set up properly. Go back to the volume calibration to ensure the speakers measure as close to minus 12 dB as possible. This error could also be caused by a loud cough, <coughs> a dog barking, or the running chainsaw you may have in the room disrupting the measurement. If the tone sweeps get too loud, the measurement will stop and alert you clipping was detected. If that happens, go back to the volume calibration page and bring the master output volume down by about 5%. You can also run the calibration again to watch the waveforms and pay close attention to which channel is playing the tone sweep when it throws the clipping error. You may just need to adjust the level of that one channel. If you have to go back to the volume calibration page, play one of the test tones to make sure the mic can still hear that speaker. Then go back to the measurement page and continue your measurements. Once all the measurements are completed, we'll click Proceed to Filter Design. 
After thinking for a minute, Dirac will show the new curve it's made for every speaker. You can see the calibration progress at the bottom of the page. Here you can make simple adjustments for each speaker to make the curves more to your liking, but we usually leave Dirac's default settings as they are. The curtains here on either side determine the range of frequencies that will be calibrated. Please note, these curtains are not crossover points. They only affect the range of frequencies that will be adjusted by the Dirac room curve. If you have multiple subwoofers, you can also turn on Dirac Live Bass Control from this page. Just select Up Mix Only or Full Bass Optimization, and Dirac will run another quick calibration. We recommend Dirac Bass Control if you have four or more subs. If you only have one or two subs, it's most likely not needed. The last step is to export the filter to your X-Series. Click on an empty slot, give it a name appropriate for your project, and click Export Filter. Dirac will send the project over the network to your audio control unit. Once Dirac is finished exporting, the front panel of the X-Series will change to display Dirac receiving and Dirac saving. Do not exit Dirac or turn off your X-Series until this message changes back to Dirac measurement. Once that's finished, save a backup of your Dirac Live project onto your computer. Be sure to name it appropriately for the project and save it somewhere easy to find in the future. Now you can exit Dirac and the X-Series will transition back to its normal operating mode. If it seems to get stuck exiting for too long, it's safe to power off the unit and power it back on using the front panel power button. Once the X-Series is up and running, press the audio button on the remote or go into the menu, go to Input Config, and select the Room EQ to turn on your newly made EQ. That's everything you need to know. You have now graduated from Dirac Apprentice to Dirac Master.